I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. And this is how we film the video. And we're capping off Eco Month with the 2019 Hyundai Kona. Electric. Obviously. This is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting a long time for this. We were super excited since the original Kona launch. All of Eco Month, we figured everything we didn't like about every car, they probably got right in this car. So now it's time to find out for sure. Why did we figure that? Because after driving the Ionic, we were kind of disappointed in a lot of other electric cars. Yeah, and our biggest disappointment with that car, I think, was just the range. Yeah, so now it's... Boom. Slightly taller Ionic. <laughs> should, we, should we get into the range, horsepowers, and the torques? Let's start with the range, then the torque, then the horsepower. Sounds good, Yuri. 415 kilometers of range, 291 pound-feet of torque, and 201 horsepower. You know what the best part is? What's that? You can really feel the torque. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the first electric car that we've driven that can actually trip the tires once you're already moving. There's so much torque in here. You get a lot more torque out of sport mode than you do out of the other modes, but we'll talk about that later. Yes, we will. So we should probably explain why we're in Los Angeles. Yeah, we should. Hyundai invited us. We couldn't make it to the actual event, but they still gave us one, so thank you. Yes, we've been very excited to drive this. We're not interested in the Nexo right now. No. Maybe Hydrogen is cool, very cool, but I think this is more mainstream right now. Yeah. So let's get to the competition of this Hyundai Kona. We've driven the Bolt and we've driven the Leaf. Those are the two biggest main competitors right now. Except the Bolt has similar range. The Leaf is way less. Yes. And then there's also the Tesla Model 3, but that's more expensive and we haven't been able to get one yet. And then there's the new Jag I-Pace, which should have been called the E-Pace. So if you want us to review a Model 3, people start tweeting at... Uh... Yeah, Elon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going through some stuff right now, but <laughs> tweet him anyways. Tell him it's legal in Ontario and <laughs> he can come visit. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's start with some tests. Visor test. It's a Hyundai. Three, two, one. Yes. Perfect. Full pass. Small cup of Tim Hortons coffee. We have a medium McDonald's. From America. I don't actually know if a small cup will fit in here. I don't think so either. It's like a layered cup holder. We'll have to find out sometime in Canada. If you know, let us know. Box test. We'll also have to find that out later in Canada. <laughs> and we also missed that on the last Kona because it wasn't in Toronto where yeah. our boxes are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But it has the most room of any of them besides the Leaf. Yes, yeah, so the second most room in its class, I guess. It'll do well, I think. It'll probably do pretty well. Rewinding satellite radio stations test. That's not a test. Yes, but... it passes. It's a Hyundai. It's got great infotainment. We'll touch on it later. Let's talk about looks because we really did like the original Kona, the non-electric, so let's hit up the electric looks. I really like that there's no air vents in the grill. I think it looks cool, but overall, I think the regular Kona front end looks way cooler. No, no, I think the electric one looks way better. It's got similar headlights. It, pretty much the same, identical actually. <laughs> and another thing about the front bumper, the charging port is in the front. Oh, just like the leaf. Yeah, that's a great spot for charging ports. I have found myself always confused what side I'm pulling up on, and then sometimes you gotta like back in because there's a car parked on either side. Exactly. So that's a good thing. I agree. And you know what else we have in the front grill? What? Active aero. The car shuts the front grill when it needs to to maximize aero. Perfect. So I don't really like this red color. I think there are nicer colors on the Kona. Yeah, they kind of went with this earthy palette for the entire EV lineup. I prefer the white and silverish looking EV Konas. Yeah, I do think they look kind of better, but the red is still kind of nice. And I want that neon green yellow that they had. Yeah, on the regular Kona, the non-electric. I want that on the electric. That's, that's that the most electric sense. color. I know. <laughs> but then you're that guy in the lime green one, lime yellow, whatever country you're from. I like and it. a full electric car. So you're kind of giving off that super electric vibe. I like that super electric vibe. I know. I okay, know. speaking of super electric vibe, what do all electric vehicles have to have? The wheels. We've got electric y looking wheels. I don't like them, but I, I get it. They're super aerodynamic looking. I don't know if they're actually contributing to the aero. Supposedly they are, but whatever. And the rest of the car just looks like a subcompact crossover. Yeah, but like a really good looking subcompact crossover. One of my favorites. Now that we're done with looks, let's talk about one pedal driving. Okay. So technically we have one pedal driving in this EV. Yes, we do. We've debated how one pedal driving works multiple times. I think we've finally come to a consensus. It's one pedal driving. If you can come to a complete stop uphill or downhill without using your brake pedal. With maximum regen. Yeah, so you can't be pulling e-brakes to stop, but you can be using paddles to stop. Yes. So we do have the same regen paddles like in the Ionic. Which I love. We've got three levels to slow yourself down on the left and three levels to coast more on the right. Technically there's four, because there's a level zero. Okay. <laughs> but there's another thing you can also do. If you hold down the left paddle, it'll slow you right down, 
and it won't add more levels to your levels. And that is one pedal driving. Yes. You so, have to hold it in this car. If you're on level three and you let off the gas, it will, accelerator, electric accelerator. Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> It won't come to a complete stop. You have to use the paddle to make it stop without using the brake pedal. Correct. But what's also cool about the brake pedal is if you use the brake pedal for the first little bit, it doesn't actually enable the caliper to shut. Right, so it actually uses the regen first to slow you down. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. And you can always tell how much power or charge you're gaining or losing from the little gauge on the left. And it's super simple. It's very simple, but we also have wicked, wicked, super nice gauges in the middle. Yeah, we do. They're very different for a Hyundai. So we can cycle through the different gauge modes with the drive modes, but I'm going to let you drive and figure all that stuff out. Should I start in power mode? Obviously. All right. It's an eco car. <laughs> Talk to me about the modes. Sport mode, full send. It's nice and quick. Is there torque steer? <laughs> Tons. Lots Good. of torque steer. We like that. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, here's that Grand Theft Auto bridge. Oh, yeah. We are at the Palisades Beach Road. I've killed people here. This is Santa Monica. GTA 5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. I love it here. So we have four different drive modes, technically. We have Eco, Normal, Sport, and Eco Plus if you hold it while it's on Eco. Do we not have an auto? Nope. I guess that's an electric thing. So adjusting the drive modes has a severe impact on your throttle input, which as we know, does that in every car. But in this car, it's like very noticeable. But it does not affect your efficiency. That's right. Which is cool. Yeah. It does affect how much regen you get. So in sport mode, you get slightly less regen than you would in eco mode. You can change how much regen sets up at the beginning of every single mode when you click your mode and choose settings. That's right. But you can only get full power when you're in sport mode. Yes, that's right. If you want to go like as fast as possible. In eco mode, you can limit your top speed, which is nice. Eco plus, you can also limit your climate and all that stuff too. But there's no kick down pedal. So it's not like the e-golf where you put your foot down all the way before the kick down pedal. Hey Yuri, what brand makes the e-golf? Volkswagen. Volkswagen? Volkswagen. Not Volkswagen. Volkswagen. <laughs> Whatever, man. Honestly, <laughs> if I say the names too properly, I look pretentious. No. That's Hi, not, that's I'm here to works. drive a Volkswagen. <laughs> well, that, yes. Basta. You have to say it a little bit wrong so you don't look like a dick. <laughs> now the gauges that change. Yes, okay. So the gauges do change. The speedometer changes into a mileageometer, so it tells you exactly how far you can go in normal mode. This has a very similar to Hyundai Kia Genesis center gauge. Well, this is a Hyundai. I know, but I'm just saying it's similar to the Raz, even though yes. it's an electric car. Except it's digital in the middle. Yeah. It's very clear, but it's got the same information, the same menu stuff. In normal mode, you can't see your speed in digital numbers in the middle. Only your remaining distance. But when we switch our drive mode to say sport mode or eco, you can. That's right. And what's cool is it shows pretty much every single number that I've seen so far. It hasn't been skipping any numbers. Well, it's not that fast. Yeah, but still. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And what I really like is in sport mode, in the background, you see numbers going by like 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, but the number keeps changing in the middle and the background keeps moving nicely with it. To be honest, I think the sport gauge is one of the nicest sport gauges I've ever seen. I agree. I love the fact that I can see my percentage use and it's so quick. There's no lag. It's just like, all right, there you go, 100%, done. And to the right of the gauge, we do have our energy flow meter. You know how every electric car tells you where the energy is going? Yeah, and you can change that as well. But that's the only place you can get it. You can't get it here. That's right. And my favorite part overall about the center gauges is how clear the power, the charge, and the overall battery remaining are. It's, it's what Hyundai and Kia does best. They make everything simple and very usable. That's right. And speaking of simple and usable, I know you want to talk about the infotainment. Go nuts. Okay, get some housekeeping done. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Both. Works great. This onboard navigation is actually not bad either. I said anything with a cursor is garbage. If I click and cursor around, it's easy to use. And if I click this arrow, it goes back to normal. It's great. Just like I expect it to. Yep. We have a tuning knob, a volume knob, hard buttons for almost everything. We still don't have a home button. I finally agree with you that I would like a home button. And we don't have like an Apple CarPlay button. We can set up the star button, which is the custom button to go to your phone. But then when it kicks you into Apple CarPlay, it'll kick you right to your phone. Yeah, you can't go into your maps directly. Yeah, so I think you guys need an Apple CarPlay, Android Auto button, a home button, and a phone button. Yes. I mean, there's more buttons, but people like buttons. There's one or two more buttons. Buttons are in. So just like the Ionic, we've got a nice little leaf for EV stuff. And then we've got our energy information, 
eco driving, EV settings, charge management, and how far you can drive on your charge. Yeah, and it's a nice round circle with your total range. I love it, just like I did in the Ionic. The BMW i3, though, had a little map that went around the areas for roads, like exactly how far you could travel, which is pretty cool. Really cool, but this makes perfect sense. And in our energy information, you can see how much charge you have left, the range, and the climate impacts to the range. It's great. Yeah, and you can also see how much CO2 you save the world from by driving this compared to a regular car. It's kind of funny, but it's kind of cool that it's there. And then if you go into your charge management, you can actually change your max percentage charge. So if you go to a level three station, these EVs like to charge up to 80% very quickly and then slow down after that. And then you can have it cut off at 80% so you don't spend money charging slow at a fast charging station. Exactly, so you're just wasting money. Since we're talking about charging, charge times. Level one, there's no actual official number. I'm estimating it to be approximately around 60 to 70 hours based on the bolt. This does have a slightly bigger battery, but it charges a little bit faster. Level two is nine hours and 35 minutes, which slightly beats the bolt, which is pretty damn impressive. Yeah, it's a huge battery. There's all that goes so much range. Exactly. Now the good stuff, level three. Level three is 54 minutes to 80%. That is amazing. Yeah. It beats the bolt. I like that. So you get approximately 200 kilometers in a half an hour. I think this is the perfect amount of range and charging for an EV car for 2018-19. I agree. Thank you very much, Hyundai, for taking care of that for everybody. Driving this is amazing. I have zero range anxiety. I have yeah. full bars, basically. Like, it's amazing. It's like your cell phone has almost unlimited juice. Like, it's great. Have I broken down your range anxiety by giving you that Nissan Leaf with pretty much no electricity left in it? No. <laughs> now you still get range anxiety? That gave me range anxiety, ah, for gotta, sure. Just go, just go, who cares? It'll be fine. <laughs> I tried to. So I'll say this much. When I went up to the cottage in the Bolt, you can follow my adventures on Instagram, Yuri Tershin and the Straight Pipes. We do document a lot of stuff you don't see on the show. Yeah. It wasn't very accurate, but the Hyundais were always accurate when we did the electric challenge like a year and a half ago. And I think we're gonna have this car later in the year as well, so we'll actually try and maximize the range. We haven't had this car long enough to be able to do that this time. So you like to talk about suspension and handling and all that stuff? I do. How does it handle? It handles LA traffic just fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Honestly though, it handles quite well. Like I haven't pushed it or anything like that, but the suspension is so soft, it's so comfortable. Like I've had no issues going over potholes and LA roads can sometimes be kind of bad. Also LA traffic is not bad at all. Come to Toronto and then talk to me. Yeah, if you guys complain about LA traffic, nah, you're all liars. 401, DVP, <laughs> Gardner. Where are you guys at? Yeah. 407, you're cool. <laughs> Love the 407, just don't want to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is one of the only subcompact SUVs that are electric with a multi-link rear suspension. So it will handle probably better than a Bolt and all that other stuff as well. That's pretty premium. <laughs> shout out Savage Geese. Yeah, I got <laughs> I gotta steal his words. Yo, shout out have... Matt Farah. We got the mountains out here. Yeah. The canyons, sorry. We're gonna have him carve it up in this. Yeah, yeah. See if he can make it up and back a couple times. Hey Matt Farah, one take this. Now let's get into the interior. But before that, I would like to mention that this is the ultimate trim. There's also the preferred. So this is the top trim. Okay. It's very nice in here. It is very nice in here. There's a few things that aren't very nice, like a lot of hard materials. Lots of hard plastics. But I feel like they put all the money into the drivetrain. Yeah, exactly. Which is even better. Yeah, and the seats and the steering and like everything that's nice that you touch all the time, it's all great. It does have some slight electric quirks, but not much. This shifter is slightly electric quirky, but it's so good. Yeah, it's the most simple push button shifter ever. Yeah, exactly. Hey, BMW, copy this one instead. <laughs> <laughs> Our center area kind of tapers in. I think that's also very electric gimmicky as well. Yeah, but everything overall is very car, regular car. Regular car, yeah. And we do have some gloss black, not that much. It is in some of the touch points, but it's not that bad. It's minimal. Very minimal. We do have some buttons down here for cool stuff like heated seats, cooled seats, and a heated steering wheel. Most electric cars don't really have cooled seats. Yeah, I think this is the first one we've driven with cooled seats. It's amazing. And these are the best cooled seats ever. They're better than Mercedes cooled seats because they actually cool your butt. Cold air up my butthole. Yep. <laughs> that is our favorite. <laughs> Cold butthole air. <laughs> And the seats are comfortable. We've got some cool piping here. Yeah, and because we have the top trim, they're leather. In the base, the preferred, they are cloth. Preferred is base. Technically, yes. That's a, that's a good way to phrase around that, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But the seats are very, very comfortable. They're actually quite bolstered. I didn't really expect that, but they really hold you in. It reminds me a lot of the regular Kona. Yeah, yeah, it does. So the regular Kona had a lot of cool green accents. Yeah, the, we had the green one. Yeah, that's right. Maybe in the future. That was an option, though. 
We do have wireless charging and my phone barely fits in there. It's like a three-year-old phone. It's a Pixel XL 1. So like, it's kind of not up to the times in terms of wireless charging space for a phone. Yeah, I can see that. So we've talked about pretty much everything except one electric car quirk. What's that? This has the loudest electric car hum. Oh yeah, it does. It sounds like ghosts. It's scary. It's pretty funny. Yeah, but it's good, you know. It is good, it's Stop, different. Stops like 20 kilometers an hour or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Whatever, it's good. Don't get hit by electric cars. Yeah, exactly. Driving electric cars, a lot of people are shocked that you snuck up on them. Yeah, they don't know you're there. So let's talk about the price. We don't actually have it. Around the bolt price, we think. It's going to be around probably forty to $50,000 Canadian. Which I think is very fair for the mileage. Exactly. If they can beat the bolt pricing, they are laughing all the way to the bank. So do you think there's any electric car from 2019 that we reviewed that you like more? No. Are there any aspects of any electric cars that you like more than this electric car? No. I think the i3 had a more cool interior. I think the Bolt maybe had a more fun interior and like a cooler looking screen and stuff. That's fair. But overall, this is like kind of the whole package. It's got the rewinding satellite radios, it's got the long range, it's got the good charging, it looks cool. It'll probably have the price. So let us know if we're wrong. Let us know what's better than the Kona, if there is something better than the Kona. Yeah, and this is now the official end of Electric Eco Month. Now it's just eco forever now. Yeah, just whenever. We'll sprinkle them in from time to time. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes and join our membership. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Oh, scooter subscribe. Right now, scooter subscribe. We didn't even... We didn't do that.